Hello guys, welcome to another interview with one of our serious traders, this time with Xavier from New York, USA. Xavier, really happy to have you here. Uh, you're another trader that is, that is being interviewed by FTMO, so uh, you tell me, how does it feel like? Real quick, I just want to say, you know, thank you for having me. Uh, I've seen tons of ton of the interviews, so being here is just like it's it's a little bit nerve wracking, but it's amazing. But I feel it's I feel proud and I feel happy because this is something that I've been aiming for for a long time, and you know what it took to get here. It was you know lots of trials and tribulations, you know what I'm saying. But definitely to be at the position that I am right now, I'm definitely blessed and grateful because you know not everybody could say that. You know your F, your your FTMO funded by a company, and you know you're able to make the money that you that that you can make. You know in any given day. So I, I just feel grateful and blessed, honestly. All right, it's always nice. All right, so tell us um how did you get in trading? How did you find out about FTMO? Tell us a bit more about your trading story. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I started train. I started trading. Um, I know the exact date, April twenty fourth of uh, twenty twenty. Oh, okay. And that was right when, you know, the whole thing with the world was happening and, you know, we couldn't really go much outside. So um, I started trading there with a, uh, a multi-level marketing company. Um, and I learned a lot about the, you know, the fundamentals about trading, you know, other things as well. But that's pretty much where I got a lot of the base work from. Um, and then after about a year of, you know, about a year and some change about being there and tons of mistakes, blown accounts, uh, psychological and emotional damage when it came to the trading aspect. Um, I, I definitely realized that it was a time for me to just kind of keep on moving and kind of do my own thing and grow from, from that point. And so from there, um, I started uh, just trading more, focusing more on the skill set, focusing more on the, the psychological aspect when it comes to trade and making sure that, that I myself am in check before I even think about entering a trade. Um, and when it came to FTMO, a good friend and mentor of mine, his name is Trey with John. Uh, he lives out in uh, Portland, USA. Um, he's the one that that specifically um, told me more about what FTMO was. You know, through social media, you kind of hear about it and stuff like that. But being someone who's new to the whole Forex niche, um, I just wasn't aware and I just didn't know what was right and everything. So once he explained to me and once he pretty much shared his vision with it, I was like, yeah, this I have to do. And ever since that point, I prepared for it. I prepared for a day in, you know, day in and day out. Um, at the time, I didn't have no money in my actual account. So I was doing, I was working on an after school program. I was doing um, Uber Eats in the morning and the nighttime, you know, driving. And, you know, I was doing that for about three to four months straight um, so that I could actually save up money of my, you know, six months of expenses to make sure that when I am trading, um, I'm not trading to make money. Like, like I'm not, I'm not forced to make money because of bills and expenses. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trading because I have an end goal of what I want to actually do with it. So, um, once I reached that point, um, I said, okay, I'm going to take this, uh, this, this, I'm not, I don't want to say bet, but I want to take this confident bet on myself based upon all the working that I've done for the last six months to save up for the next six months. Um, all the back testing, all the practicing, all the studying, the, the 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 strategizing that I did while I was working in the night times, like those are the hours that people don't see. Mm -hmm. So um, once it was time to actually, you know, take the actual challenge, I had the eleven hundred dollars set to the side, and uh, January first is when I took that decision, and it's it's paid off since then, one hundred percent. Okay, wow. So you certainly have been through a lot before you actually started, you know, started earning. Yeah, I started being you know, profitable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you mentioned the, the psychological point of view, which you know really caught my interest. So yeah. So, uh, what really, you know, how do you evaluate whether you are ready to really enter a trade from the psychological point of view? Yeah. So you know, when I realized that I was back testing in the market. The way that I back test was okay. I'm gonna take the same maybe one or two pairs at the same time. For me, it's New York session, so for me, mm -hmm. I traded in between you know eight and eleven a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if I would get upset at a trade that I didn't even really take, but I was upset at the fact that it hit stop loss, or I was upset that it didn't run, you know, it just didn't do what I wanted to do, then I knew that I wasn't ready, you know. The way that I that I understood my psychology was 
if you know, if I'm gonna get mad about a, 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 a demo trade that I didn't take mm-hmm. about it not going my way, then how am I gonna react to it if it's my live account? How am I gonna react to it if it's my actual challenge verification or even you know when I get the actual live account of an FTM account? How am I gonna react to it? So based upon how 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 I felt, you know, I'll grab a journal or I'm gonna write down in my notes application on my phone or on my laptop. And I would write how I feel before I take the trade. I would write how I feel after I take the trade. And I would write how I feel, um, well, before, during, and after. So before, during, and after the trade. Mm-hmm. I would just keep knowing that and keep myself in check because I don't, you know, I want to make sure that I'm in the best position to actually take the challenge, not be emotional. Because the second you, you become emotional with your money, that's the second that you're, you know, you're no, you're no longer trading at that point. At that point, you're gambling. Oh. And so once I really realized that, that was when I was like, okay, cool. Once I've once I've leveled that that self mastery, I was like, okay, now is actually time to take the you know to take the challenge and actually see where this can take me. Mm-hmm. But I definitely had to make sure that all of those you know all of that was in check within myself before I even go ahead and you know risk my own money or risk someone else's money within the markets. Okay, so you really try your best to divide emotion away from trading, away from money. Exactly, you know, and not only that, but also like accepting the risk. Mm-hmm. Accepting the risk that, like, when I, when I say accepting the risk, I mean, you know, regardless of what the outcome is, you know, with the FTMO challenge, you know, take that as a learning experience, as a learning opportunity. You know, whatever, you know, I realized there was a point where I was trading and I was just reflecting on the first couple of, uh, on the first trade that I took. And I was like, it was, it was probably like one o'clock in the morning. And for whatever reason, I couldn't sleep. And I was like, Xavier, whatever the outcome is, you know, you, you know, you did great. You did everything that you you did everything that you could do to get to this point, and and just be proud of yourself and just 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 take this experience as a learning experience for what comes next. You know, within my journey, so I definitely had to accept the risk. You know, because if I didn't accept the risk, then who knows what would happen if God forbid, you know, I, I feel the challenge, right? How would I feel if I never accepted the risk or I wasn't emotionally disconnect from the money? Okay, so uh, if I understand this correctly, before you went to the FTMO challenge, or before mm-hmm. you even enter a trade, uh, you gotta make yourself comfortable, you know, with the thought that it may not go well. Of course, of oh. course, because you know, like, like the way that I, the way that I looked at it was, there was, there was a point in my journey where, where I made money really, really quick. I could, man, <laughs> there was a point where I made ten thousand dollars, um, in one week. This was during the Ooh. U.S. elections. And I told yeah, myself so you had the volatility Friday, in your face. Yeah, the volatility was insane. <laughs> yeah, I see. And I told myself, I told myself Friday, I'm not gonna trade. <laughs> what I did, my friend called me. He's like, Xavier, are you trading today? I said, Nope. And then I had the charts open and I was looking at Euro USD. And I was in I took the trade, I was in drawdown, and at that point I was kind of like panicking because mm-hmm. At that point, I didn't really have a set strategy. I didn't have no like trading. I didn't have my own trading rules, um, and so I was panicking. And my heart was beating. It was beeping like it was beating like crazy. And I took another entry, another entry, and it just drawed down, drawed down. So from being at about eleven thousand dollars in equity, um, I was left with up with about nine hundred dollars. And Ooh. every single day after that, the following week. Um, I was losing 1% a day, 1% a day, 1% a day, because at that point, you know, like my, my mind wasn't in it. You know, I wasn't like, like me as a person, I wasn't in it with the trading, but I was still forcing myself to trade. And so me doing that, I was doing more harm to myself than I was doing any good. So at that point, I realized that I never, I never want to feel that way ever again. You know what I'm saying? I I never want to feel that way ever again. And so ever since then, I fallen into like a big like trading depression. <laughs> uh, I wasn't trading for like for like a couple of months, um, and it was a big like self finding uh, moment, you know. And you know, once I took the time out to actually learn and study, and you know, uh, definitely learn learn from other traders out there. Um, I, you know, there was one point where I was back testing, and I finally found that aha moment, and that's when everything clicked for me. Okay. Yeah. I see. Well, you know, you said that you you like to learn from the other traders out there. So, so that brings me to the question. So, you, I assume you you have watched some of their interviews with other FTMO traders. Oh, right? for sure. Okay. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, is there any like particular, you, you know, some particular, you know, just something 
that you saw from the interview that really, you know, made you say like, oh, wow, like, yeah, this is like really something that you should incorporate in your trading as well. So, I'm, so I'm, I'm be, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be very honest. It was a Lambo Raul's video. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, one, like him being right now 23 years old, I'm 20. I turned 21 in June. And so kind of like the perspective is is different. You know, it's kind of like, wow, like if, if he can do that at that age, you know, given that, you know, he started trading much younger than I did. Um, but if he can get to that point, he was like, I know that I can as well. So when I was watching that, I loved how, you know, and this, this is a big reason why I bring up psychology as well, because mm -hmm. him being the age that he was when he made that video, one of his big, um, like one of the big topics in that interview that I, that I recall was um, the way he held himself up when it came to the topic of psychology, you know, and just being uh, psychologically, you know, mind within yourself. And so um, that was the biggest thing that I took about that interview, because I believe it was about an hour long. Mm -hmm. But not yeah, only that, he made, yeah, he made he made looking at the charts very simple mm -hmm. you know um, even some of his own videos on, on his youtube page um you know he, he makes looking at the charts very simple very technical and that's that, that's very very similar to how i trade. I'm, I'm very technical when it comes to the charts and if i don't really see what it is that i want to see then I, i'm not really going to go ahead and take a trade you know i'm always looking for the the highest probability setup when it came to it and if lambo Raul ever watches this video i will say this one thing right now I am going for that 100k payout. <laughs> all I'm gonna say, man. <laughs> nice, nice one. All right, well, that brings us to trading. You know, so so you said you're trading mainly with uh, technical analysis, right? Yep, for sure. Okay, so you're using price action, or how exactly do you determine you know how to trade? Yeah, so um, a lot of it is you know uh, you know Fibonacci retracements. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, price action. Um, I'm looking for like candle confirmations. I'm looking at overall structure with no markets, and also just correlating structure. And so correlating the higher time frames with the smaller time frames, and usually, um, I tend to to my stops my stop losses are usually based off of lower time frame uh structure, and my reward is based off of the higher time frame structures and. You know, that's pretty much how, how I base my setups off of a lot just to get that 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 nice risk to reward ratio. Um, but my minimum, like my minimum is usually one to three. You know, uh -huh. one to three risk to reward. Um, that's usually what I always aim for. If there's room for more, I'll leave it open. But as soon as one to three risk to reward is is, is met, um, I usually leave my stops um, in profit. You know, and if for whatever reason, I, you know, the market isn't really giving me a reason to close out my trade, uh -huh. then I'm not closing it out. And I have a perfect example off of the second trade that I took in phase one. That was okay. that was the coming setup, man. So definitely. All right, good. So uh, that brings me to questions. So you're using a lot of time frames, right, to define you know when to exactly uh, enter the position. Mm -hmm. Are you using any any indicators whatsoever? Not so much. So the only indicators that I have on my charts are moving averages. Okay, so, so MACD, I, have, I assume. Mm -hmm. So I have a I have a an eight EMA and I have a a 21 moving average or uh, sometimes I also like the 66 moving average. And so I kind of use the whole like, you know, MA cross kind of thing as a, as a big indication of, of a transition in the market uh, for me. Um, but, you know, that's just kind of like extra confirmation for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Well, uh, mm -hmm. as I was checking your trades from your FTMO account, I saw yeah. that uh, you like the Dow Jones a lot. At oh, least yeah. that's where you you made the yeah. most money. So yeah. uh, I wanted to ask: Do you also consider fundamentals? You know the news releases in your strategy. So I'm gonna be honest. So um, in co so in college, I'm a I'm an economic major, economics major. So so um, for so a long you're, you're right now you're studying as well, right? Yeah, I'm studying. I'm, uh -huh. I'm in college okay. as well. Um, yeah. So I I try I was doing accounting and finance, and now. I'm doing a, uh, um, I'm doing this uh, um, economy major, and um, for a long time I put aside the fundamentals. But you know, especially where we're at right now, um, and what's going on. So for example, like yesterday, the the the, the federal government raised the interest rates. Um, everything that's happening in the world, and so you know, gas is going up. You know, mm -hmm. if you go on social media, that's what everyone's talking about is the price of gas in the U.S. Um, and so the more that I notice that and the more I kind of notice how that affects the market, um, I, you know, like right now, I'm not going to say, oh, I, I use fundamental analysis, 
but I do look at it. You know, I, I do keep in mind of it. You know, I, before I trade, I always have to look at my Forex factory or my FX books to see what the economical news is for the day or for the week or for the month. And so it's not something that I heavily rely on, but it's something that I keep in the back of my mind. You know, so if there is news, you know, happening, I always attempt to match it with my technicals. Okay. And they're just, you know, and then from there, just pretty much go with the overall setup that I'm going with. Uh-huh. I see. But, with, but, but without Jones, I'm still very technical. Like, I want to say like 80% technical, like 20% fundamental. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about. So uh, you were mentioning the, your trading during the presidential election in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. and the increased volatility. So are you the type of trader that really enjoys high volatility, you know, high swings? Or do you just look for like more like calm waters of trading? At the time... At, which was wait, well, yeah, I believe that, that was twenty twenty twenty, yeah, twenty twenty, yeah, twenty twenty, yeah, twenty twenty, yeah. I had to make sure it was November, I believe. I believe it was November. Oh yeah, that that would sound yeah. right. Yeah. So um, back then, yes, I love volatility, loved it. I would love um also NFP, loved it. Uh -huh. um, it was May either like quick money, right? You know, it was either it was either you make tons of money or blown account on NFP Friday. So, <laughs> um, at the time, yes, but I feel like every new trader, you know, love you know they they love it because that's what calls their attention. But at the same time, you know, like I said, after that experience of losing that much money within a week, um, I took a big step back, and so now I've learned to just appreciate the calm waters, you know. Um, so one thing that I used to do is I used to, I used to uh, back test on slower pairs. So like mm -hmm. all USD, NZD, USD. So that could really be comfortable with seeing market structure. Um, and then from there, that, that was what, excuse me, that was what pretty much built up my tolerance uh, to get to US 30. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say I'm, you know, I'm not like Q banks with US 30, but, you know, I, I do see a lot of the setups. And, you know, when I do take a setup, it's because I'm 100% like, like comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you see, you know, any correlation or do you use any correlation with uh, US 30, um, well, let's say to gold, right? The correlation between gold and US 30. Do you take advantage yeah. of that? Um, so I've thought about it. <laughs> I've, I've definitely thought about it. You know, um, I have a friend um, that we're on the phone a lot. His name is Julio and he loves gold. And so you know, every time I'm looking for a short on on US thirty, he's looking for a buy. He's looking for buys on gold. You know, and so um, he's been taking a lot of advantage of the buys on gold. And I've you know I've stuck with my US thirty. But you know, I don't really. I, I've dabbled on gold before, but I usually don't stray out of you know gold, GBP, USD, you know DJ here and then. Um, but I usually don't stray out of those three pairs. Mm -hmm. All right, I see. So Xavier. Uh, let's now take a look at the trading platform you prepared. Uh, uh, I can see a GBP USD. So uh, yes, you mentioned that you had some good trade in the FTMO challenge, right? Is that what yeah. you're about to show? All right. Well, let's see what it was. Yeah, let's get into it. So um, I'm going to head back to January 4th. Uh, that was the second day of my phase one challenge and the sub that I actually took. So we're going to be right about here. And so um in this we already seen a couple of things right so if we just zoom out a little bit uh we see that we was in a huge downtrend right and from there it broke structure right so pretty much these are level of interest that i'm already looking at right so this level right here is one that i'm already looking at um because we're we're right now transitioning from this downtrend that it was in it broke structure right so it, it took out all of these previous lower highs Mm -hmm. right we, we was pretty much consistent with these lows right so a, a lower low was not created within this level so this leads me to believe that we have you know some form of uh, of seller's exhaustion within this area and so potentially we could be looking at at, at, a, at an area where there's transitioning within the market so uh within this point this whole like december december area i wasn't really trading right and holidays looking to be with the family but when I did start the challenge, I already knew that by this point, I started in January 1st. By this point, we was already transitioning into a full-blown um, uptrend. So already my bias in mind is, okay, I'm looking for buys. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for buys. I don't want to take advantage of any of the counter trends. I'm looking for buys. And so with that being said, with that already in mind, I already know what is it that I'm that I'm pretty much looking for. So there's already a couple of areas of interest that I'm already just going to be marking off. 
right? Just simple market structure, break and retest certain levels. And then from here, just break it down into lower time frames, right? So um, given how I trade and the time frame that I, and the time that I do trade in, um, I know that um, I'm trading at eight o'clock in the morning. So let's go back down one more time frame and go down to the one hour time frame and just go back to these days. Um, so uh, let me just jump in. So you said you're trading uh, mainly the New York session, right? Yep, New York session, correct. Let's see, see the best. Okay. Um, could you find like any particular reason? Of course, uh, you know, considering that you live in New York, uh, <laughs> are there any other advantages why you know you you pick uh, the the US and why? Yeah. So yeah, of course. So I mean, New York session. Well, aside from just the benefit of just overall timing, mm -hmm. um, there tends to be uh, just a lot of good movements um, that usually happen after London session that I really like to take advantage of. Um, either before the 9.30 New York Stock Exchange open um, or after, right? It just moves really, really smooth. Um, I don't know. I just, I just like the way that it, that, that it moves, you know, catching, you know, 30, 40 pips mm -hmm. and just catching that crossover between New York and London is just, it, it's pretty much my bread and butter within there. And so that's pretty much how I kind of base um, base my setups off of a lot. Um, so I usually have my mark, my, my charts already marked up. And then come the, the following morning, I, I usually already know what it is that I'm looking for. All right. Well, let's get back to it. Yeah, let's get back to it, right? <laughs> so um, within this area, we're still, you know, making higher highs, higher lows, higher, high, uh, higher highs, higher lows, right? So structure really isn't being broken. So January 4th is where we're at right here. So we're pretty much in this area. And like I said, I'm just, I'm just following structure, just, you know, marking up areas of demand or of supply and so me looking at this you know i'm waking up the next day and i'm looking at this right here so at this point from seven to eight o'clock in the morning we have a, a a bullish engulfing candle so this candle had engulfed over the uh, over the previous candle so i really like this you know and the fact that we have this is pretty much tells me that okay buyers are still in control of the market so i'm just gonna go ahead and just mark this area off right there let me make this let's say green and we're gonna go another time frame down i'm gonna actually use a replay tool so that we could just stay within this area mm -hmm. we're gonna mm -hmm. go another time frame down right and once again we have another one of these candle formations i don't really look at doji's as much of an indicator so i use i usually tend to delete this this area right here i don't really look at this doji as 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 much confirmation for me at all I tend to put the bearish and the bullish and engulfing count together and kind of what is that? You know, it's still showing me that buyers are still in control of the market. I also go down another time frame. I'm getting the same story. So at this point, uh, my trade was something along the lines of entering past this candle. I believe I had somewhat of a 12 or 13 pip stop loss. Something, I believe it was something along those lines. And my take profit, if memory serves me right, I definitely left. I definitely left more pips on the table, but it was something around 45, 49, 50 ish pips. We could double check in the account and me the account metrics right now. Mm -hmm. But this is pretty much what my setup was, right? And so even if I was to place the Fibonacci from here, place my fibs from this low point to this high point. It pretty much had aligned up with all of the, the the confluence that I'm looking for in the trade, all the confirmations that I'm looking for, which is a 61.8 percent um, uh, price reversal zone. I got numerous um, candle confirmations and numerous time frames, not just the 15, not just the 30, even the one hour. We could break it down to the five minute time frame and even see uh, more confirmations. Right, I put my stop loss right below the lows within the market, right, because I knew that at that point. Um, I believe I did have a, a 12 pip stop loss. I believe at that point, um, for me, if price was to go below this area, then that's what I'm accepting, right? That's that's the amount of space that I'm giving my trade to mm -hmm. accept that that you know, right now this bullish move, right now, just you know, right now might not be ready. But given everything that I'm seeing, given you know everything that I'm getting from the market, um, I knew that this bullish move was was definitely more than ready to to happen. And so I don't rush any trade. I make sure that the market tells me, you know, 
you know, it, it's pretty much like a story being given to me, right? Um, as long as I'm reading it and as long as it's making sense, then I know how to act. You know, if for whatever reason I doubt something or I'm confused about something, then at that point I'm not gonna take the trade. So okay, so you're that. really waiting for a confluence of signals, right? Before you actually enter the position. So you you, you mentioned the the higher lows and the yep. higher highs. That itself wouldn't be enough for you to really enter the position. So you you yeah, no. use the Fibonacci retracement here. Um, is Fibonacci ret retracement uh, something that you use often with forex? I I used it a lot. I mm -hmm. use it a lot. You know, it was one of the first things that I that I learned when it came to trading, and just when I when I was learning more about the Fibonacci ratios, it's not just something that's used. You know, just for trading, it's something that you see all across walks exactly. of life. You know, you know, universe, the pyramids of Giza, everything. So, for whatever divine reason, I don't know these these ratios, these percentages, they work. And when it comes to these three. They're the ones that work one is the 38, the 61, and the 78.6. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm what I'm focusing on uh when it comes to price reversal zones. 50% is kind of like you know, 50% meeting of you know potentially, potentially not. But I, I feel more comfortable when it reverse when they when the retracement goes to the 38, the 61, or the 78.6, right? Um, and for whatever reason, I have a full blown 100 percent retracement, that would be the steepest retracement that I would look for to enter a trade. Anything after that, and, and at that point, the, the idea is pretty much wrong. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to ask, do you use Fibonacci retracement for anything else outside of Forex? I mean, for indices, for example? Oh, indices as well. Indices, indices is, too. Is the, same, is the same. I'm very technical when it comes to It's the same story, right? So um, the first actual trade that I took, um, within the challenge was a uh, a US study trade, but I'm not gonna lie to you. There was a lot of uh, emotional um, in that setup. I had profited four thousand dollars, but um, I didn't hold it the full way just because it was it was right. Um, there was a couple minutes after the nine thirty opening, mm -hmm. and there was a, it was moving. It was fluctuating a lot, and so I I was able to I was able to, to I was able to profit about four thousand dollars off of that setup. But um, I didn't take advantage of the full move that happened afterwards, right? But even that move was still based off of a Fibonacci um, retracement level. Okay. And so pretty much, yeah, pretty much the same. This, the, what I just showed, you know, showed you guys right now is pretty much how, how I approach trading with all different asset classes, whether it's cryptos, whether it's, you know, currency pairs, whether it's um, indices. I look at it the same way. Very technical when it comes to it, right? All right. Um, also, uh, you mentioned the uh, the psychology, so I wanted just to jump back to it for a moment. Uh, in the start of the interview, you said that uh, you journal how you feel before you take mm -hmm. the trade, yep. during the position, you know, during the trade, and uh, after you close it. So, is it something that you really do with each trade? Every trade, yes. Every I trade. have a um, I have an application. It's not on the laptop. It's usually on my phone. I could even I could even you know, I don't know if you guys could see, but I could. Yeah, I'll show you guys right now. It's called Notions. And mm -hmm. so um, Notion allows me to actually, I don't know if you guys can see it, but basically I have my before and afters of all of my trades. I have every reason as to why I took these trades. Um, I have, you know, I show whether I profited, whether it's stop loss. And in Notion, I'm able to have a tab, uh, you know, so I have my, you know, my trading, my backs and my studying. And then I have a tab where it's called Emotional Check. And so in these Emotional Checks, I have the date of every trade. I have the before, during, and after. And I just write down uh, how do I feel before I take the trade. You know, so, you know, once I have the idea pretty much already there and I know what I'm looking for and I'm just waiting for more confirmations, that's when I take the time to just take my phone out and just type up just how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling nervous, if I'm feeling anxious, if I'm feeling very confident, if I, if I'm, if I like the idea, but there's a couple of things off. Um, I, then after I take the trade, if I take the trade, of course, I write down how am I feeling during the trade, right? So, uh, is there any doubts? Uh, is everything going well? Am I anxious? Am I nervous? Right? Is my heart beating faster than you know more than normal? Um, and then after the trade, how am I feeling after? You know, so if it take profit, then of course I'm feeling happy, right? If I, if it hit stop loss, how do I feel? Because that's the most important. You know, that that's the most important. If it's stop loss, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. Are you upset? But it's okay. You really <laughs> believe in the setup. 
are you mad? You know, you know, all of that. And there's times where I catch myself, especially when I first started doing it, there's times where I catch myself um of being upset, you know, and it's kind of like, okay, Xavier, like after a couple of time, after a couple of hours, it's okay, let me just chill out, let me put some house music. <laughs> um but, but that's pretty much what I do. But um for this setup, it was usually like I said, so this was about a, a one to four risk to reward ratio. Um and so this setup, it was interesting because it was uh aside from me back testing a lot it was one of the times where i was seeing you know that much money you know um in profit in a trade and so this setup um was the fifteen thousand dollars setup and i can go to my account metrics yep gbp usd buy oh the prices are right here so 881 i can just put that in right here so um 881 oh yeah about about the same price yep. 881 yeah, I remember. I, I I know. I remember the setup. There's no way. There's no way that I would forget it. Um, <laughs> eight eighty one, and then yeah. So about eight eighty one was the entry. Um, this was the fifteen thousand dollar trade, and um, what I did was um, a lot of the pullbacks. So a lot of these like small little pullbacks, especially this one right here. I was telling myself, okay, do I close out? Do I hold the trade? And so in me determining all of this, I had to realize, is the market giving me a reason to close this trade? What do I mean by that, right? So for me, it's always going to be about structure. And so I'm looking at the setup, and if I were to even go, oh, never mind. Well, <laughs> oops. If I was to go, go. Uh, <laughs> if I were to go, um, let me take this off right quick. If I were to go. Close your head right real quick back. A little mistake. <laughs> if I were to go all the way to the five minute time frame, the 15 minute time frame, and just look at structure, I'm asking myself, is the market giving me any reason to close this trade? Because if it's not, then why would I close it? Um, February 1st, what are we at? January 31st, 28th. Yeah, this is something, you know, because. Um, a lot of people are always discussing, you know, when to enter the position, you know, what signals to receive before you enter the position, but also what's really important is to know when to exit the position, right? You, yeah. you got to know, you know why and when to close it. Yeah. So uh, I'm just thinking yeah, because uh, I saw some of your trades and uh, I saw, for example, some position I had uh, very firmly set stop losses and take profit. But yep. uh, on the other hand, there were also positions with no stop loss, no take profit. So I will, you know, that that makes me wonder, like, uh, how do you know when to really exit the position if there's no no stop loss or take? Yeah. Profit? So I, I like to actively analyze. So mm -hmm. hopefully, I believe five minutes is the most I could. So I like to actively analyze, right? So usually, if we just look at structure from the moment that I enter my trade, you know, we, we made equal highs with you know i always look to the left we make equal we, we made equal highs with this five minute you know resistance right so i look at that kind of like traffic cool traffic what, what happened instantaneously you know we got a little pullback come down right and then what well, we had another push back up and then we came all the way to this point so you just look at a at, at microstructure so we made a high higher low higher high so we had broken this level of resistance. Cool. So same story. What is this? This is a little retest, right? The lowest that we got at this point was right here. Retesting what? The previous level of resistance on the five-minute time frame. Cool. And then what? We got a higher high. Once again, so we're still following mm -hmm. structure. Yeah. Right? Then we got we got another pullback. You know, we went back to the lowest wick. You know, we could say that it retested back into this point right here. For me, this is the way that I looked at it. If it was to break this level right here right i'm closing that trade is this that something that you you know do with all trades you open them and you actively monitor them you know what's I, going on I, I remind, yeah i i set myself a time from um 8 a.m from 8 a.m to about 11 11 30. that's the most that i'll go actively analyzing my trade anything after that if i'm in profit i set my stop loss into profit and then i, I let it rock or I just let the trade rock out, um, you know, give it the stop loss, give it the take profit, um, and then pretty much roll like that, you know. But in this case scenario, I was actively analyzing this trade, 
And so um, at this point, it, it had hit, you know, where I wanted the price to go, which was about about 50 pips um, in profit. But I knew that if, if for whatever reason it were to break this point right here or close even below the, or close even below these candles, now I'm looking to close this trade because if it's going to retrace that steep, it's going to be a minor break of structure in the one minute on, on the five minute time frame. And we might even get like a steeper retracement before market has the potential to even come back up, you know, or the you know the probability of, of it going back up isn't going to be as high as it would be if it just, you know, did what it did, which was bounce off of this level and keep on going back, back into profit. Mm -hmm. And so that's how, that's how I was actively analyzing uh, this trade. Um, there are some trades like like you mentioned that I don't I don't put a stop losses and, and take profits because I'm actively analyzing and, and a lot of those trades they were with um with US 30, especially with the uh, with my live account. Mm -hmm. uh, a, lot, a lot of that is because um I'm still getting a feel for the market even even with the entry point that I that I, that I actually entered. So I would enter I would take a trade in. And then I would set my stop loss first after I took the trade, right? Um, and then from that point on, I'm looking for the take profit to be, you know, the one, you know, obviously I'm, I'm aiming for that one to three risk to reward ratio, but I also want to make sure that my take profit is somewhere that makes sense within the market to test or to break, right? And so that's pretty much how, how I've been determining that and also actively analyzing the market, right? So everything falls under market structure. But then within that is where, you know, you, you obviously have the extra confirmations like, you know, the candle confirmation, the Fibonacci ratios, um, trend lines, you know, trend lines if I if I if I deem it necessary to use one um, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So uh, you said you like to, uh, you know, uh, monitor and manage the position actively mm -hmm. uh, in the morning, uh, 10, 11 a.m. your time. Uh, so. And it seems that you're not the type of trader, you know, who would spend uh, eight hours a day in front of the screen, right? Nah, a lot, man. I have a life, man. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get to the gym, you know. I gotta, you know, I gotta eat. <laughs> I can't be long, in long past all the day, you know, long, you know, nah, like those days of me just being up in London, not sleeping, looking at my phone, and just, you know. I'm not gonna say kind of like panicking, but like when you do that, it's kind of like, I don't know. It was just something about that. It was like, it was, when I used to do that, it was cool that I was doing that. Cause I'm, I'm you know, I'm trading. Yeah. But at the same time, it was like, man, I don't feel too good. And so, <laughs> so I, I, I you really yeah. have to find, you know, uh, you know, your, you know, how to trade. Because yeah. I guess a lot of people, you know, but they, first, if you start trading, of course you spend, you know, as much time as you can in front of the screen, but you know, for a lot of people, that is not simply sustainable. So you really had to find, you know, what suits you the best. And yeah. it seems that it works for you well. Yeah, New York session. The only time, the only time that I would trade, um, you know, outside of my, uh, outside of this time frame is if like, I know that there was, you know, news, you know, that was going to affect the market and it was the market was moving really slow. Usually that tends to happen during like FOMC statements or things like that. So I usually wait um, either before, uh, either either after news comes out and see if I can, you know, you know, take advantage of the movement. Um, or if not, I just don't trade at all. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when it comes to like those big events, um, I usually, not that I usually tend to stay away from them, but if it's a setup beforehand, like before news, like in the morning, cool, I'll take it. But if it's not a setup and, Maybe there's a setup, you know, after the news comes out, then I'll be open to it. I won't, I won't rule it out, but you know, it's it's a lot of what ifs. It's a, it's a lot of you know things that 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 are out of outside of my control that pretty much determines if I'm gonna take a trade uh, when news comes out or not. Okay, so here we are in your account matrix of your FTMO account. So here we see the balance curve that uh, that uh, ended up at around seventeen and a half thousand dollars. So uh yeah um we would like to see how it went for you and uh, is there anything specific that you like to describe in account metrics or uh, is there any uh any metric that you actually use the most yeah so i i realized real quick having something like i've never really had like an account metrics like i usually um do my own like you know uh account went to loss ratio by myself through the math so to have something like this was 
was definitely awesome. And so the main part was obviously just seeing this. You're seeing, you know, how much in profit are you? Just, you know, seeing, you know, if you take a draw, you know, if you take a, if you take a hit, you take a loss, you know, just refreshing a couple minutes later and then looking at your account metrics, it was like, ah, oh, like it's back down a little bit. So like, you know, even like this, I was like, I remember taking, I remember losing a trade and seeing this and I was like, ah, I don't want it to go down. I wanted to keep on going up. Of course, you know, everybody does. Um, but, you know, seeing how fast, you know, it, it refreshes was, was, it was definitely really cool. And then from there, just being able to scroll down and um, look at the trades. Look at those check passes, man. It's beautiful. Um, but being, you know, seeing this, they are. You know, yeah, was, best. yeah, seeing this, man. Uh, when it first, when it first, when you had, when I had all the green passes, I was like, oh man, but seeing that's awesome. Um, yeah. but I mean, to, what, what's it's really, you know, uh, unusual here is that you, you never really went below the initial balance because we consider max loss is, you know, zero, nothing. And also, yeah. what is very impressive that you, you did not even leave half of the max daily loss limit you know it, it, you have a two hundred thousand dollar account so the max daily loss in your case was ten thousand dollars and again yeah. you didn't even need the half of it so that risk, is really impressive risk management is important you know i i feel like that's the risk management psychology i feel like is the two most important things when it comes to a trader you know once you have that in check there's i, I personally feel like there's nothing to stop you you know you have your strategy which you know, you've you back tested and you've, you've, you know, as a trader, as an individual, as an individual trader, you know, you've proven to yourself that it works. You know, after that, all you need is your risk management plan and then just making sure that you're emotionally in check and psychologically in check. And so once I realized that there was no reason for me to doubt myself or anything like that, you know, my strategy works. And so at that point, it's just put it to work. Um, but yeah, risk management is so important to me. Like it's, that's, that's the key. That's what was missing. For me, when I first started trading, was the risk management aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Um, that you know reminds me. Uh, are you planning on trading uh, your own life account as well? You know, aside yeah, from so, a demo account. Yeah. So, um, when I was when I was as I mentioned earlier, when I when I was working, um, and saving up my my monthly expenses, you know, to live and everything, um, I set aside money to the side to you know just just throw into my real account, and actually with some of the profits that I'm using, um, from FTMO. Gratefully, um, I'm going to be, you know, taking a big portion of that and putting it into my live account as well. And just pretty much, you know, taking more FTMO challenges and also uh, funding my personal account as well. Mm -hmm. uh, why I'm asking this is uh, because, uh, of course, the, the risk management rules in the FTMO challenge verification on the FTMO account, obviously the max daily loss and the max loss limits. Uh, is it something that the, you would apply on your own life account as well, right? Like, let's say, setting a max loss that you are allowed to lose in a day, something like that? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, that that's that's the key, you know, because, you know, I look at myself as, as a, you know, a creature of habit. You know, humans, we're, we're all creatures of habit. And so once you once you have these guidelines set for yourself, you have this, you set of rules where you're, where you're disciplined to follow, where you, you know, like obviously, if you if you fall outside of these rules, you know you are able to make that decision and you know you know face the consequences or the reward, right? Because you know it's always going to be a, a probability. Um, but you know these exact rules that FTMO has in place is what I would do with my own live account as well. You know, I'm um, at the end of the day, I'm I'm risking one percent of my account. I'm going for a one to three, one to four risk to reward ratio. So. In a in a day, what are you looking at? In a week, what are you looking at? In a month, what are you looking at? You know, it, it's 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 highly doable to be able to grow your account, right? Um, ten percent in a in, in a month. That's highly possible, right? I passed the challenge. I passed phase one in two days, right? Two beautiful setups, right? Mm -hmm. And as you're as you're stacking up profits, you also have the 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 option to you know if you want straight out of that you know what i did my my strategy was i'm going to risk one percent of my account to make you know one to three risk of reward which means uh three percent gain right and so what i did was after this first day after that that first trade that i took um and that gp usd setup came came around instead of risking one percent i risked 1.5 percent and so now the gain was much more because I already had mm -hmm. profits. I right? see. So yeah. That. So the profit allowed yourself to actually risk a little bit more. A little you know, bit more. Right? Gets you 
even psychologically in a better position, you know, because you know that you have this buffer, this this uh, this profit, this. Uh, uh, how much was it again? Uh, on the GU trade, it was uh fifteen thousand. Oh, fifteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah, on the GU trade. Yep. So just just keeping that all in mind, it's kind of like you know you, you just have to work on what's your risk management plan. For me, it happened to be risking one percent a day, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 going for that for that three percent gain, four percent gain, five percent gain, you know, depending on risk to reward, of course, right? But then you know if you, if you have a 60, 70, 80 win to loss ratio, you know, even you know fifty or forty, you're still gonna end off in profit, right? At the end of the day. Yeah, this is something that uh, I've noticed as well. You've mentioned, you know the. Of forex is pretty much a game of probabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, if you scroll down a little in the statistics section, we're gonna see that uh, uh, your win ratio is above fifty percent while yep. remaining, you know, above one with the risk reward ratio. So this seems to be the the route to profits. You know, keeping the win rate above fifty percent and also the risk reward ratio good. So yep. uh, yeah, that's that's a good one. I definitely, um, I definitely fell out of the average uh, out of my one to three. <laughs> having the live, I'm gonna be very honest. Having the live account is different than the challenge, um, because now you know that like you can make this kind of money, and mm -hmm. so I noticed within myself that emotionally, or like psychologically, you know, I was acting a little bit different, right? Especially like, like from the first couple of trades. Um, once I realized that I was like, cause for example, right. I have 24th up. I got the account. Um, it was, I believe it was after this first hit where I was like, well, I just lost $4,000 today <laughs> and not just like, Oh, a challenge $4,000. It's no, it's $4,000 that at the end of the month could be what I could be withdrawing. Mm -hmm. And so once I realized that as well, it was like, okay, they were like, you know, like, I, I, there were certain trades where I acted a little bit out of character in, right? But at the same time, like, and that's why, that's why, like I said, keep myself emotionally in check is, is super important for me, right? Um, but, you know, all of these, all of these little, like, you know, mistakes, like these smaller trades, um, all of these, you know, kind of like little, little setbacks, it, it all helped me establish kind of like at the end of the month, you know, where I have to improve on as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, oh, one thing also I, I, mm -hmm. I saw in your account matrix that, you know, caught my attention. If you scroll down a little, you know, in the, in the statistics section. In the where? Uh, in the statistics section. Below oh, the trading statistics. journal. Oh, uh, below the trading. Oh, yes, below, yes. Below, 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 below. Yeah, oh, there we yep. go. Uh, the buy and sell ratio, I can see that all of your profits almost were made <laughs> on shorts. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you had some, some long positions as well. But uh, sell seems to be the way for you. So, so what do you think is the reason for this? Why, why shorting is way I've, more profitable? I've had that that debate with with people so many times. I have no idea. Honestly, I feel like it was the time in which I was trading. Um, just everything was everything was just you know setting up for sales. You know, um, I, you know, going with the overall with the overall trend movements. Um, everything was telling me shorts. But if I'm gonna be very honest with you, a little bit biased, I think sell is just like it just looks just a little bit more spot on, right? Someone just told me, someone just told me, bro, like the same thing that you're looking for sells, just turn it around and look for buys. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. I think I think it had to do a lot with the time that I was trading, um, and what was going on within the market. But um, yeah, man, sells. Right. <laughs> I wish I could give them more like. A more like profound answer as to why yeah i, I um, mean you know this is the perfect answer actually yeah. if it was just this particular month you know uh that's 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 perfectly possible all right xavier so uh, now the final part well, i would like to ask about your future plans i mean you bought your first ftmo challenge you passed okay. it you received you know all the profits so you seem to have a uh, you know a good future ahead so so tell us a bit more about your plans yeah, for sure. So um, what I have in the works is um, I'm going to take another uh, 200K FTMO challenge uh, and merge them together to get the, you know, the full 400K uh, account. That's a big goal of mine. Um, and then from there, I just want to actually, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, especially around my neighborhood that they don't really know about trading in the foreign exchange market or, 
using an, an MT4, MT5 platform to trade crypto or to trade, you know, indices. So, you know, I, I'm definitely, I, I definitely want to be able to help people just like me. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a kid from the Dominican Republic that came to the U.S. at three years old. You know that, you know, parents not forced, but they encouraged to to go to what the American dream was. And so, you know, I, I found something else. I found something else that really works for me that I really enjoy doing. And so just as, you know, people like certain things, I know that there's people around my neighborhood that could definitely get into this and can definitely change their lives because an opportunity like this to get funded, to be skillful, you know, that what FTMO is doing for people, not everybody outside is doing that. And not everybody knows what this even is or what it could do for you. So I definitely want to help people just like me, people that aren't like me as well. But, you know, I definitely want to go ahead and just just be, I'm a role model to a lot of people and, you know, just say, hey, you know, if, if, if I could do it, you know, I'm no different than anybody else. You know, I'm not special. You know, I just put a little bit more time into learning something that not everybody else is, is doing. And so if I could do it, you know, why can't other people do it as well? Um, and so that's pretty much, you know, what I aim to do. I just started a, you know, a YouTube page. Um, you guys can catch me at um, I am Xavier DL on YouTube. That's also the same as my Instagram. And uh, be in the, in the lookout for some of the content that I'm going to be providing very, very, very soon. Okay, nice. So um, uh, previously, you've mentioned that uh, you had to perceive the FTMO account in a different way that, than yep. a live account. So yep. uh, I would like you to elaborate more on that. Then, you know, what will be your advice to creators that, you know, are just starting the challenge or just mm -hmm. got their FTMO account. So, so would you have any, any advice for them? Breathe. Oh my gosh. Breathe. You guys have 30 days in your challenge, 60 days for your verification. Breathe, you know, take your time, right? One loss does not mean the end of the world, you know? Um, and just refine your skills, you know, make sure that you're walking into this challenge level headed, you know, make sure that, when you pass phase one, you're level headed. Make sure when you pass phase two, you're level headed. And most importantly, when you get to that live account, that's when the real challenge begins. The challenge of actually being able to keep the account, you know, to profit from it on a consistent basis, to be able to withdraw on a consistent basis, to make trading, you know, your goal of of, of being able to live off of trading. You know, these this is what matters. This is the journey. Right. Everyone's journey is different. It could be easy. It could be hard. It could be fast. It could be slow. But this is the part that you're supposed to fall in love with is the journey because everyone learns something different from it. And so my biggest advice is just breathe. Take your time. You know, no one's rushing you. Right. And if for whatever reason you feel rushed, then it probably wasn't the best time to take the challenge. So that's nice. the biggest advice that I can give. Yeah, I think that's that's just perfect. Yeah. Lovely. Um, also, you mentioned that you're a student. You're 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 gonna turn 21 in a few months yeah in june june 7 21 man <laughs> <laughs> in june finally able, able to you know legally go for a beer that's nice bro you have i have a plan man i'm gonna florida oh you already man. have a plan for the 21st man Thursday. i have a plan I, man listen i gotta i got the withdrawal already i went out to the mall i bought myself a computer pc setup i listen man i got june already planned and everything <laughs> me and my friends we already you know the whole shebang nice Nice. So <laughs> what I wanted to ask, you know, so uh, what are your plans in life when it comes to trading? So, so I assume you, you would like to finish the college and then do you want to do you want to keep trading as something, you know, you, you want to devote just like a few hours a day or you plan to become a full time trader? You know, tell oh, us man. a little bit so, more. Yeah, so I, plan to, I plan to become a full time trader. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, if I'm going to be very if I'm going to be very honest with you guys, I come from Hispanic heritage. Um, you know, the college is something that, like, you know, parents definitely, you know, are, are a big influence with it, you know, because they, they didn't get the chance to go to college and everything. And so um, if I could, you know, not if, but when I graduate, it's going to be it's going to be 100 percent be for them. But at the same time, I'm not ruling out the opportunity of what can I do from here. to a year later or a year and a half later. Right. And so I def my plan is definitely to become a full time trader um, and, you know, just work with people, work mm -hmm. with people and, you know, Obviously, get to get to the point where I can work with people, right? You know, um, build my comfortability, build my credibility up, but um, definitely work with people and, and and you know, kind of help them go through their journey as well, and kind of be that that person that could you know just walk their hands through it as well. Because I didn't really have that, you know, I didn't really have a person that could just walk me through certain things. 
Um, I would ask questions to a lot of people, and sometimes I don't really get the answer that I'm looking for, the answer that I needed. And so I want to be able to be that source um, for people that that they can come to. And mm -hmm. so trading full time is definitely is definitely the goal. It's been the goal for the last year and a half, two years almost now. So that's the okay. goal. Okay. Yeah. What a nice to end it. So uh, yeah, the final thing um, before we go off, uh, me Eric, any last words? Mm -hmm. Anything you like to hey, say? Man. Guys, catch me. My YouTube page is, is up and running. Once I get my PC, I'm gonna start, you know, making content. But it's I am I A M Xavier D L on YouTube. Um, my Instagram is the same way. And so just be on the lookout. And yo, thank you, FTMO. And that's FTMO.